They're going to add some crunch and also that beautiful kind of musty, unusual uh, woodland flavor from these ramps. Musty, unusual woodland. <laughs> Where did that even come from? These are ramps. On Secret Sauce, our mission is to find that one little thing that takes a recipe to the next level. On each episode, we'll call up my friends to guide us through making a kick-ass rendition of their favorite dish. It is a spectacular day outside and I feel like making something a little bit lighter. So I think I'm gonna make some poke. I'm gonna head in the kitchen and call my buddy Mark Noguchi, who's a chef in Hawaii, who's gonna lead me through the tips and tricks in making the best poke. It takes three times as long to call Hawaii. Did you know that's true? It has to go, it has to hit three different satellites. Oh, there you go. Hi. What's up, buddy? Hey, bud. So listen, I wanted to call you because um, you're probably going to be mad at me, but I want I want to make poke, okay. and I know that that's like a, a bastardized thing in a lot of places, and I wanted to do it the right way, and I knew that there was only one person that I could call. Well, you know, I'm not a hater at all about people doing poke okay, elsewhere. My, I think... I think where I get frustrated is if you're gonna talk about something, you're gonna do it, right? Like any good cook, not it doesn't matter whether you're doing poke or anything. You to get to your homework, you gotta understand. Absolutely. So poke, when you turn something into a trend or a fad and it becomes the hot thing to to consume, uh, you deplete resources, right? Fish, our oceans, the finite resource. And Matt, you've been a huge proponent in in, in staying local and. and keeping it with your geographical area so I, I want to see what kind of poke you make but that's the only guideline that you know I have on that subject mm -hmm. um, so having said that you can poke anything poke it means just make it nice in, in Hawaii I love I love the mantra less is more try to stick to five ingredients or less and you know and, and pick the ingredients that are, that are showcase the main component right I want you to, to walk me through your version of poke and talk a little bit about it and, and, and show me the way, Jedi. One trick that I learned um, from an uncle was to season your, season your fish with salt first. You know, and so this has been salted maybe about 15 minutes, maybe mm -hmm. 20. And what it does is it, it kind of firms up the flesh. And you know, this is about like a, a large, it's about a large dice. Okay, you know? yeah. Okay. And then, so it's bigger just, than it's actually bigger than I thought. I'm glad. I'm, can you show me again? The way I look at it with my poke is, I want the cubes big enough that it will hold up to whatever ingredients it goes in it, mm. as well as still preserve the integrity of the flavor of the fish. All right, so I got my seaweed. Yeah, this is going to give me some a little bit of crunch. And what kind of seaweed is this? This one is called manawea. Manawea. One thing about, you know, one thing in gathering anything is you need to know how to pick it. And with the, um, you know, with the interest and the proliferation of more people by the ocean, as well as the changing waters, you know, our, our native seaweeds are becoming less and less. Mm. So I don't have, wait, so I don't have fresh seaweed. I've got a little yeah. like togarashi mix that has some seaweed in it and some sesame and stuff like that. But yeah. You know, I always say over here, kuku and get. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't expect you to have limo or you know some of the other ingredients over here however you took your knowledge base right and added that to your pocket and made that yours so yeah. i don't think you know pretty sure or not eats right on point good morning welcome to mud season in vermont we're going to head into the woods and find some ramps So ramps are native here in Northern Vermont. So you can tell them by these broad green leaves. There aren't a ton of them left in the world. So when we take ramps, we want to do it 
in as, as sustainable a way of, as we can. So what that means is leaving the root stock behind so that they can propagate and grow again for the next season. So I'm gonna take my knife and just trim the roots off, leave the root in the soil, and pull the rest of the ramp out. This is a prized culinary token. You only take what you need, right? Our goal as foragers is not to disrupt nature, but to celebrate it. I would definitely recommend people do their homework. I mean, we talked with Mark yesterday about, you know, how important he feels it is when you're cooking or exploring, um, you know, the culinary world to really do your homework. No difference here, right? Now that Chef Mark has provided me with the basics for how to make a great poke, I'm gonna add some flourishes of my own to draw inspiration from his dish. I'm gonna start by dicing my fish. Now one of the things that Mark said was to leave nice sized chunks of fish so that it doesn't break down in the sauce and holds up to a toothsome bite. That's kinda of cute, toothsome. Who says that anymore? Me. I've got beautiful yellowfin tuna here that came right off the docks down in Boston. So now I'm gonna make my tare. I start with shoyu or soy sauce, a little bit of sesame oil. Next up, to make it my own, just a kiss of maple syrup. Finally, I've got some fermented pepper sauce that I made from peppers in the garden. Oh, it's so delicious. Those elements together make it really balanced and it's gonna be awesome with my poke. So now I'm gonna add some fresh ingredients to my poke to really liven it up and give it some much needed texture. I've got ramps that we forged this morning. I'm gonna shave the bulbs of the ramps really finely and they're basically gonna act as a substitute for what might normally be red onion or shallot in this recipe. And then I'm gonna save these greens for something really special at the end. I'm going in with my ramps, some scallion top, and some of that Fresno chili. I'm gonna grate in a little bit of the uh, preserved peppers, the dried peppers, the same ones from the garden that I used to make the fermented pepper sauce. Then I'm gonna fold it all together. It's just beautiful, I can't wait to eat this. That sounded so corny. So for my last little piece de resistance for this poke dish, I'm gonna take the greens off of my ramps, give them a quick sear, and then make a ramp oil out of them. Being that New England is home to a bunch of old mills, I went out and found some awesome stone ground cornmeal from Rhode Island. So instead of doing rice today, we're gonna do grits as the base layer. They'll hold that poke really well. The sauce will seep into it. They're not screaming hot. You wanna make sure that these are really more kind of room temperature. I just wanna end with a little bit of kiss of furry cocky. And then don't forget, I've got this awesome ramp top oil that I made. This is so delicious. It's got that perfectly just warm layer of grits on the bottom that are nice and creamy. That chilled poke that's tossed with the maple tare, a drizzle of the ramp oil, those shaved ramp bulbs. You know, yesterday Mark talked about his secret sauce, which was making sure you do your homework when you make a dish, yet also paying tribute to it by incorporating local ingredients. I think we've done that here, and this dish is kick ass. There are going to be many more keepers to come. Stick around for the next episode of Secret Sauce.